Hi friends, I've decided to make this video based on the 13 points I listed on my tweet that's gotten so much attention next to a barbed wire to prove a point. So here it goes. Important facts on Xinjiang that must be understood before having any nuanced discussion. Number one, Xinjiang is about a third the size of Europe. It borders several troubled countries and those borders, as you can see by this terrain, are extremely difficult to control. Number two, the population is 20 plus million with 12 million being Uyghur. There are several other minorities and uh, China's majority, the Han, are also a sizable chunk of the population here in Xinjiang. Three, not all Uyghurs are Muslims and not all Muslims are Uyghurs. There are several of those uh, other minorities that are actually Muslim as well. Number four, not all Uyghur are moderate. Some of those are extremists. Five, those extremists had hope of establishing a caliphate here in Xinjiang. They use violence against all of those not following their extreme interpretations of Islam. Their violence included not only people like me without religion, but also moderate Muslims and even Imams. Number six, thousands of people died during terrorist and jihadist attacks over many years in China and Xinjiang as well. Seven, to put a stop to this madness, China implemented measures to catch extremists. Whatever nuanced discussion needs to be had regarding those measures, it is key to remember that most Muslim leaders around the world who have visited Xinjiang understand the issue and support the approach. The overall assessment is that it has worked. There's been no terrorism since 2017. Number eight, China kept the issue of terrorism in Xinjiang rather quiet for the most part. In order to keep harmony and prevent hate against all Muslims or all Uyghurs or whatever, attacks and violence were given as little coverage as possible in media in the country. That meant that the world never heard of the issues. They only heard of the heavy measures that came to control the issue. So when China opened up about the history of violence and uh, the hand of these extremists, the world didn't believe it. Number nine, terrorists have families and aiders and mentors and abettors. Some of those people left the country and became quite vocal against the measures once they were abroad. I want you to ask any of those witnesses how they left China. Most of them left with passports and visas to final destinations, and today many receive funds from the US or other governments. That's, that's an interesting thing to consider. Number 10, some population at risk of indoctrination received training. Um, indoctrination is a lot easier on idle or poor or unemployed populations. So along with some patriotic teachings and even Mandarin teachings, they received vocational skill training and they were helped to find jobs in and around Xinjiang. Adrian Sens calls this forced labor. But what's this video right here to learn how my wife ended up in Guangdong? Spoiler, the same job placement scheme. 11, it all worked pretty well. I've met a few locals who share with me off camera how they feel about life here now, how they feel about sanctions. Interestingly, what they say is that it makes them feel integrated to China since the rest of the country makes it a point to buy things from Xinjiang and to visit them to support them. There's millions of tourists each year. 12, there's still loads to do. It is a very harsh environment, as you can see. Distances are huge, challenges are massive, but Xinjiang sits at the center of the land portion of the Eurasia commerce that can replace maritime routes, which are controlled by other countries. The willingness to develop Xinjiang like other provinces is there. Plus, there's oil. 13, a final thought. Were there abuses during the crackdown on extremism, uh, separatism and terrorism? That's a possibility. I'm not gonna deny that, deny that possibility. But officers did die fighting these criminals. We're all human. That requires an investigation. But here's the thing. How do we know that they have not already taken place? Think for a moment. If China wasn't public with the terrorist attacks that killed innocent civilians and police officers, what makes you think that they would go public with uh, investigations of abuse within their own force? That we haven't heard of it does not mean that it hasn't happened. To suggest that it hasn't means that you claim there is no rule of law in China, and that's a commonality in China haters. Keep that in mind. One thing is absolutely clear though, there was and there isn't any evidence of systemic abuse by authorities during that time. I hope that this video gives you a more nuanced understanding of what Xinjiang went through 
through those years and what lies ahead for the region and its people. So please join my adventure showing you what it all entails. Feel free to leave your sensible questions and comments below. And you know what to do, like, comment, share, and until I see you again, take it easy and bye for now.